The doors closed, and a crowd formed a perfect oval around Oku, Zara, and Lione. A lesson? Oku asked her. He then turned to Lione and witnessed her smirk as she glared down Zara. What have you done? Only told her the truth, Lione answered. What truth is there to tell that neither one of you have told me? Oku asked. Too late for explanations, Zara said. She readied herself into her stance, and Lione did the same. Oku raised his hands to both of them. Wait. Both of you need to explain this to me. We'd be here all day, Zara said. I intend to make this quick. Oku backed away from them both, flustered. He took his place along the rest of the Red Leopard Academy. Zara and Lione studied each other, both holding completely different stances, yet matching lethality. Both legs bent at the knees, she said, eyeing Zara's positioning. Both arms forward, palms facing down, down. That's your own touch to an old, ancient stance, isn't it? I've watched you spar, Zara said, with confidence in her voice. I know your moves. Lione scoffed. Exactly. Spar. You've barely seen what I can do. But since you wish to make this a fight of ancient customs, then I guess I will entertain you. Try me. Lione nodded and crouched down into the ancient stance she used against Oku. Of course, Lione didn't actually expect for Zara to make the same mistake Oku made, which was to rush her. Seeing how Zara had an ancient stance of her own, Lione felt it best she kept focus and not underestimate her. But she did. Zara pressed her feet firm into the mat and darted for Lione. She couldn't possibly be this stupid, Lione thought to herself. If she watched me spar with Oku, then she'd know what happens next. Lione smirked, and just as Zara was within her range of attack, exactly as Oku was, she flexed her leg to make a move. But Zara leapt into the air, jumping over Lione's sweeping foot. The miss shocked Lione, and when she looked up, Zara's foot dashed her down into the mat. Lione face-planted, and the mat shook with a resounding smack. The students and teachers gasped. "'Do you take me for a fool, girl?' Zara asked as she looked down on her. "'To think I would attack you the same as my peer?' Lione shook her head. "'I'm more than just a girl.' Zara smirked. She raised her fist and attempted a jab. Lione caught it in her hand, then wrestled Zara to the floor. Zara tussled along the mat with her, trying to free herself, but Lione tightened herself up like a snake, locking her legs and arms around Zara's neck. Before she could lose consciousness, Zara elbowed Lione in her gut, and they scuffled along the floor, slamming each other until their hand-to-hand -hand combat took over. Their strikes were almost faster than anyone could see, yet blow for blow, they matched each other in damage. Oku inched forward to the mat, but a message from Kemboy stopped him. Hearing of the incident take place, he assured Oku that they will both grow weary soon and it will be over. He couldn't be any further from the truth. Bloodied, both Zara and Lione took a swing at each other and landed simultaneous blows. They stumbled back, catching their breath, and Lione pulled out one of her secret tricks. Have you had enough yet? Zara asked her, panting. Not even close. Lione changed her stance. She stood as straight as a pencil and shut her eyes. Zara smirked as Lione brought her hands together and started to take deep breaths. Are you praying that the gods will save you? Your prayers will fall short. I bet they won't even tickle the base of the clouds before I make you choke on them. What is she doing? Oku whispered to Kemboy through his wrist tech. Give me one moment. Kemboy got to work. He scanned Lione's vitals and noticed elevations in radioactivity similar to Han Lototo's. Oku, get everyone out of there. What did you find? Oku asked. It's about to get hot, Kemboy answered. Lione yelled at the top of her lungs, and a blazing fury of fire and smoke burst from her skin. Her eyes glowed red, and her hair cast a bright flame. Parts of her chest burst open, revealing her ribcage and portions of her chest bones. Behind them rested a glowing orange, beating heart, encased in a protective fire shield. Bits of her legs were missing. Where the bone should have been was molten lava. The students in the academy screamed and stampeded in terror, heading for the door. When everyone escaped, Oku closed the doors behind him, shutting both he, Zara, and Lione inside. 